Hi, I'm Richie, otherwise known as Dirty Secrets, and in this video today, we're gonna to be going through the Live Enhancement Suite, a small little app that runs alongside Ableton Live and gives you a whole load more features and keyboard shortcuts that will really speed up your workflow. It's available for both Mac and PC, and it's a free download. And in this video today, we're gonna to be going through some of its best features. Okay, so let's go ahead and download this cool little app. If you head over to enhancementsuite.me, this is where you can download the live enhancement suite. As I mentioned, it's available for both Windows and Mac. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the Mac button. Now, as I mentioned, it is a free download, but if you wanna show your appreciation for it, you can follow the developers on Twitter from within here. And they've also got a donate button on the homepage if you wanna do that. Now, I already followed these on Twitter, so I'm gonna go ahead and download the app. Now, when you first install this, you might wanna keep the website open because they've got an excellent documentation setting. This is where you can go to to find out all the different keyboard shortcuts and also all the different features and how to use them. So you might wanna kind of reference this when you first start using the app. And there are just so many keyboard shortcuts packed into this small little app that you will wanna kind of reference this documentation when you first start learning the app. So once you've downloaded it and unzipped the zip file, you'll then be able to install the app. and then you'll be able to launch the app straight from your applications folder. Now, when you first run this app, you probably think it's not actually doing anything. The only thing you might notice is a little icon that appears within your status bar. Now, this is where you're gonna go to to configure the suite whenever you wanna kind of change any of the settings. But for the most part, this little app just runs in the background and all the magic comes when you first start using it within Ableton. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the features of this amazing little app. I'm actually gonna start with one of my favorite, the plugin menu. Now, I've got a MIDI channel here with just a simple piano instrument on it. And say, for example, I wanted to add some audio effects into that. Well, then I go to my browser, I go to the audio effects tab and say, I wanted an echo in there. Let's drop an echo in there. And then maybe let's say I want a reverb as well. I'm gonna put a reverb in there. And then maybe I wanna put a MIDI effect in there. So I'm gonna jump to the MIDI effects and I'm gonna put a pitch just before the instrument. So obviously I'm jumping backwards and forwards in the browser to kind of get all these different things. And then I'm dragging and dropping them onto this track here. Now I did mention that this app is all about workflow and actually making it quicker for you to work within Ableton. And that's why it's adding a brand new menu into this bar down the bottom here. If I double right click with my mouse on the plugin bar down here, it actually opens up a little menu. And from this menu, I can actually directly access some of the different effects within Ableton. So for example, if I want to put an echo in there, I just put the echo in there. And if I double right click on it here again, I can put a reverb in here. And it's really as quick as that. It actually goes to the browser, it finds the plugin, and it puts it straight on the track like that. Makes it very easy just to add new plugins whenever you want to, just by double right clicking. Now, as you can see from this menu that I only just have a few audio effects within here, not all of the ones within Ableton. And this is where the customization comes in with this app. You can actually customize this menu to have in there whatever you want to. So you don't have to have all of the different audio effects, just the ones that make sense to you, the ones that you use all the time. So you're not actually seeing those effects that you never use. You can customize this however you want to. And it's not just audio effects you can put in there. You can also put MIDI effects in there. You can put instruments in in there. You can even put specific patches in there if you want to. Now you can configure this menu by clicking on the app icon and selecting configure menu. This opens up a text file and this text file basically has the configuration for that menu. So you can go through here and you can add different items to that menu. Now this does look a little bit complex at first, but if you look at the documentation on the Live Enhancement Suite website, it will teach you how to then customize this menu. So if you head over to the menu configuration section of the documentation on the Enhancement Suite website, it'll actually talk you through how you can add your favorite plugins, your favorite instruments, audio effects, MIDI effects to this menu, and even giving you hints and tips how you can create multi-layer menus as well and really categorize stuff to make sense to you, to the way that you work. 
Okay, so let's start customizing this menu. Now we can see already that we have the echo in here, the reverb in here, the saturator, the utility and the EQ8. And let's add another audio effect within here. But this time I'm gonna add a third party plugin in instead. And I'm gonna add the Isotope Neutron 3 plugin. Now this is a plugin that I use quite a bit within my tracks. So it makes sense to have it on this menu. So it's right at my fingertips. So I'm gonna add this as a brand new item. Now we can see at the bottom of this text file, it says don't remove this or the program will not work. So I wanna make sure whatever I add is gonna be above this, but I'm gonna put it below the EQ8. So I'm actually gonna put a couple of new lines within here. I'm gonna type in Neutron 3. Now you can see with the other effects within here, they're actually duplicated twice. You can see echo is twice, reverb is twice, saturator is twice. Now, why is this? Well, the first line is what it's labeled as on the menu. So I can put in here whatever I want to. I could put in isotope neutron three or just neutron three or even just neutron. However, I wanna kind of put it within there, whatever makes sense. The second line is actually what this plugin, this app searches for within Ableton. So if I go to my search bar within Ableton here and I type in Neutron 3 and then I go to all results, it will actually insert the first result that appears within here. So we can see the first result when I type in Neutron 3 into the search bar is the Neutron 3 VST. So what I need to do in here is put in Neutron 3 and that is exactly what's gonna be inserted. Now, say for example, I didn't want to use the VST, I wanted to use the AU. Well, it's gonna pick the first one from that list, so how do I put the AU in instead? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put these in speech marks. And then just after this, I'm gonna put in AU, audio unit. And this will ensure they'll actually insert the audio unit rather than the VST. So if I now save this file, I now need to go back up to the app icon again and click reload. This means it reloads this config and then the app now has the new item within there. So if I now go back to Ableton and double right click, I get that menu pop up and I now have the Neutron 3 within there. If I click on this, it will now add Neutron as a plugin on that track. Now let's try adding some instruments within here. Now you can already see that we have an effects category. We can see the effects category within here because it's got a forward slash before it. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna put some instruments within here. So I'm gonna put a couple of new lines within here. I'm gonna put a forward slash and I'm gonna put in instruments. This will now create a folder within this menu for our instruments. And then I'm gonna put a couple of new lines within here and this is where I'm gonna add an instrument. So for the first instrument, let's take, for example, the Korg M1. So I wanna be able to put this within the menu. So again, I'm gonna to go to my browser up here. I'm gonna type in M1, and then I'm gonna to go to all results. Now this, the first thing on this menu isn't actually the M1 instrument. So let's try searching for Korg M1, for example. Now we can see the M1 does appear within this list and it's actually the second item on here and it's the audio unit that we want. So what I'm gonna do, is gonna go back to here again. I'm gonna type in Korg M1 because this is gonna be the uh, label that's gonna be on the menu. And then under my search term, I'm gonna put in speech marks, Korg M1. And then I'm gonna put AU after this. If you wanted to use the VST instead, then you could just put in VST if you wanted to. And again, I'll save this. Click on the app icon and go to reload. And then on my plugin panel, I'll double right click. And we can see we got a new instruments category within here and I can go to the core game one. Now we can see that that didn't actually work. It couldn't actually find that plugin. So I'm gonna go back to the text file again. And I'm actually gonna get rid of the speech mark, see if that helps. I'm gonna click save again, go up to reload double right click and try again. And there we go, it's added the Korg M1 to that track. Sometimes it does take a little bit of experimentation and playing around with this text file to get the results that you want to. And finally, I wanna show you another example. It's not just audio effects, MIDI effects, and plugins you can add to this menu. You can actually add presets as well. So say for example, I've got a whole load of chord presets within here. I can actually add those to the menu as well. So let's go back to the text file. And I'm actually gonna add a new category within here. I'm gonna put in chords. 
and I'm gonna put a couple of new lines within here and I'm gonna put my minor seventh preset within here. I really love this one. So the first line is gonna be what it's gonna be on the menu and the second one is gonna be the search term. So this is where I'm gonna try and find it within the search results. So let's type in minor seventh, for example, and I'll go to all results. And we can see at the top of the list isn't the one that I'm actually after. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in speech marks and that's still not kind of finding what we want it to. So I'm actually gonna do it exactly what it actually is. So I'm gonna put the dot ADV in there as well. And now we can see that is exactly what is coming up there. So I'm gonna copy that term. I'm gonna put it into my text file, save this, click on the app icon, go to reload. And back in Ableton again, I'm gonna double right click and we can see you've got a brand new category in here called chords. And we can see my chord preset, the minor seventh is within there. I click on that and it adds it straight to the track. So as you can see, it's a really powerful feature. And yes, it does take a little bit of time to go through and learn how to set all this up and go through and find all those different settings for your different instruments, your effects, your presets and everything else like that. But once you've got it set up, it's gonna speed you up no end. Just having that right click menu there and having quick access to all your different plugins and presets, it just saves you so much time. Right, so let's move on to the keyboard shortcuts. Now Ableton Live already has a load of amazing keyboard shortcuts that allow you to navigate the software very, very quickly. But Live Enhancement Suite just gives you a whole load more that really kind of turbocharge your workflow. Now, the first thing you need to make sure that when you start using any of these shortcuts, if they don't work for you first time, it might be because you have computer MIDI keyboard turned on. Now, if you've got this turned on, that means you can use your computer keyboard as a MIDI keyboard. However, some of these shortcuts might actually use some of those same keys. So if you're having problems using some of these shortcuts, you might wanna turn that off. You can go to the option menu and turn it off from there, or you can go to the toolbar along the top right and turn it off from there. Now the first keyboard shortcut I wanna talk about is called new version duplicate. Now say for example, you're working away on a project and you wanna make a change to it, but you don't wanna ruin it. So what you might do is you go to the file menu and you click save live set as. You then create a brand new version of this live set so that if you have any problems, if, you, if that new change that you make isn't what you want, then you can go back to a previous version. Well, you can actually do that with one single keyboard shortcut with Live Enhancement Suite. On the PC, if you hold down Control, Alt and S, or on the Mac, Command, Alt and S, it will automatically create a new version of that project with one single keyboard shortcut. Now, by using this keyboard shortcut, what you might not have seen then, because it was done so quickly, was that it actually opened the Save As dialog and saved this project as a new file. And it actually appended a number to the end of it. So you can see that the My Remix file here has been appended with underscore two. And if I was to do it again, so if I hold down Command, Alt and S, it will do the same thing again. And this time it's appended it as underscore three. So you can see within the browser, I've got the original project and then I've got underscore two, underscore three. So if at any point you wanna create a new version of this project, you can just use that keyboard shortcut. So the next keyboard shortcut I wanna talk about is called Absolute Paste or Absolute Duplicates. And for this example, I've actually got two audio clips. I've got a blue one here, which is all cut up. And then I've got a green one here, which is just one big audio clip. Now, if I was to duplicate this blue clips here, just use the duplicate command within Ableton. So Control D on the PC or Command D on the Mac. It would then duplicate these clips on top of that green clip here. So we can see that we've got the blue bits, but we've also got the green bit that was there before beforehand. It's not actually copying and pasting the empty spaces here. Now with the new keyboard shortcut called Absolute Duplicate that comes with Live Enhancement Suite, we can actually copy across those empty spaces. So again, I'm going to select those blue clips here. And this time, instead of using Control and D, I'm going to use Control, Alt and D on the PC or Command, Alt and D on the Mac. So as you can see there, not only is it copying the cut up blue clip, but it's also copying across the empty spaces. And I can do the same thing with copying and pasting as well. So I can actually select those blue clips. And then on the PC, I'd use Control and C. On the Mac, I'm gonna use Command and C. And then I can actually paste it over the top of that green clip. So on the PC, that would be Control and V. On the Mac, that's Command and V. As you can see, we're getting the same kind of result as we were with duplicating. So we've got that green clip in there, which we don't really want. So we wanna copy across those empty spaces. 
So instead of using the normal paste shortcut, what I'm actually gonna use is the new absolute paste shortcut, which is Command, Alt, and V. As you can see, it does the same thing as the duplicate and actually copies across those empty spaces as well. So the next keyboard shortcut is a really simple one, but very, very handy. It will just save you those few seconds. Now, say for example, I have my keys track just here. This is my kind of main melody line. I've got my instruments set up and I've got all my different effects on here. And basically what I wanna do is I wanna duplicate this and then create kind of a complementary kind of melody line with the same instrument. So what I need to do is I need to duplicate that track. But of course, when I duplicate that, I'm also duplicating the MIDI notes. So I'm, have to, I'm gonna have to go through and then delete all these MIDI notes. Well, there's actually a keyboard shortcut which will save you from having to do that manually. With the track selected, all I need to do is hold down Alt and X and that'll clear the whole track out for me. So I'm then ready to then put in my new melody line. Now this next shortcut is really handy for those that like to use locators. Now, usually to add a locator, you go up to the scrub area at the top here, right click on it and go to add locator where you want a locator. But there's an even quicker shortcut that you can put in with the live enhancement suite. Just find wherever you wanna put the locator in, say for example, just about here. And then I hit Alt and L on the keyboard. That'll create a brand new locator and I can then start naming it. It's a really, really quick way to put in a locator wherever you want to. So I've saved the best trick till last, or at least it's my favorite feature of Enhancement Suite, and it has something to do with drawing MIDI notes. Now, when you're in the piano roll, there's a whole load of different ways to make MIDI notes. For example, I can double click on a cell and that will then create a note and I can click and drag it out. Another way is to hit B on my keyboard to go into draw mode, then to click on a cell and then I can drag it out. Now, obviously that's three different actions to do that. First of all, I'm hitting B on my keyboard, then I'm clicking to draw a note, and then I'm dragging it out. However, Live Enhancement Suite actually does this with one single keystroke. So even when I'm not in draw mode, what I can do is hold down the tilde key on the keyboard, click and drag, and this will create a brand new note and drag it out to the length that I want to. So I'll do that again. You can see that this is just the normal arrow. If I hold down the tilde key, click and then drag, it does it all in one action. It seems like such a simple thing, but it's something I wish Ableton just had as a default. But thank God for Live Enhancement Suite. Now these are just a few of my favorite features and keyboard shortcuts within Live Enhancement Suite. If you go on to the website and go into their documentation, you'll find all the different features and all the different keyboard shortcuts and how to use them. So I definitely recommend checking that out. But also be sure to check out the documentation because not all of these features and keyboard shortcuts are cross-platform. They're all designed to work on the PC, but some of them don't work on the Mac. So definitely check out the documentation to see what's right for your platform. Also, with the keyboard shortcuts, most of these keyboard shortcuts are the PC shortcuts. So you might need to experiment around for the Mac keyboard shortcuts. For example, with the new version duplicate, the PC shortcut is Control, Alt and S. This is what's in the documentation on their website. But the Mac one is actually Command, Alt and S. So you might just need to experiment around and play with different combinations to find those same keyboard shortcuts on the Mac. But it is an amazing little app and it will really turbocharge your workflow within Ableton. There's some really amazing features that will make it so much quicker to navigate around Ableton and all of its different features. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.